fourth SEAT conference at ZEW in Mannheim. In a two-day conference under the heading Public Finance and Income Distribution in Europe, experts from economics, science and politics addressed current financial issues. Among the participants, both national and international, ZEW President Clemens Fust welcomed Hans Eichel, German Federal Minister of Finance from 1999 to 2005. In his speech, Eichel recalled the founding principle of the European Union. It took two world wars, with all their terrible consequences, to drive through the European idea, the idea of the unification of Europe. Today, there is a gross misconception damaging to Europe that the European project is elitist. Europe was never an elitist project. Europe after the Second World War was not a project of an elite, it was a project of the European peoples. Baden-Württemberg's Deputy Minister-President and Minister for Finance and Economics, Neil Schmidt, pointed out that Europe's financial crisis was followed by a crisis of confidence among the general populace. Recently, the finance section of one of the major dailies ran the headline, Europe Confidence Returns. Now, that may well be true for investors, but unfortunately, it's not true for the real crisis in Europe. I refer to the confidence of the citizens in European politics. Both politicians called for European institutions to be strengthened, and Seichel argued for a European Republic with common economic, foreign and defence policies. Europe is more than an internal market. Europe is also more than the euro. Europe is above all a community of values, an image of how we wish to live together. This means freedom, human rights, democracy, social security and prosperity for everyone. We still have a long way to go. In the panel discussion that followed, academics and politicians debated the opportunities and risks of a European fiscal union. How can the EU member states consolidate their economic systems without jeopardizing economic growth and social cohesion? How can a further widening of the gap between rich and poor be prevented? We're now talking about the European crisis because it extends beyond the financial markets. In the meantime, it has also weakened the confidence of the general populace in the European Union. Indeed, in some of the countries affected, democracy itself has been weakened. First day of the conference, the second keynote address was given by Vito Gaspar, special advisor to the Banco de Portugal. Until 2013, Portugal's former Minister of Finance was crucially involved in his country's economic stabilization program. The situation started stabilizing only after political commitment to deeper integration was achieved in the European Council of June 2012 that was followed by the announcement of the outright monetary transactions program by the ECB in September 2012. On the first day of our conference, we've had a very interesting report from the former Portuguese Minister of Finance, Vitor Gaspar, who guided his country through the crisis, introducing systematic reforms. On the second day, our most important keynote speaker is Thomas Piketty, described by the New York Times as a rock star among economists. His book created a great furore and stimulated discussion. That's why we want people like him to come and talk to us here. At ZEW, the rock star economist Thomas Piketty presented the statistical basis and thesis of his book Capital in the 21st Century, in which he warns against the growing divide between rich and poor. The people feel that the entire continent is owned by the Emir of Qatar or the Bank of China or whoever. And, you know, I think it's important to calm down uh, this kind of uh, uh, feelings uh, and to realize that, uh, you know, the, uh, Europe has actually more financial assets in the rest of the world than the rest of the world has in Europe. And, and, and the net national wealth of Europe, so the sum of private and public wealth, uh, has never been higher in terms of years of GDP for an entire century. Inequality is, is okay and can actually be good for growth and innovation until a certain point. You know, the problem is when inequality becomes really extreme, then, you know, this can uh, have consequences for access to political power, to political influence, so this can be bad for our democratic institution. 
As well as attending the high-profile keynote by Thomas Piketty, participating economists also took the opportunity to discuss their specializations in small seminar groups. For various reasons, we think the economy is doing badly, or a country is doing badly, and then everything is bad. There is this feeling we just need a better sales strategy in order to convince people. I think that what's missing in politics, there's a lack of vision. Economists provide politicians with the facts they need. The research programs seek strengthening efficiency and competitiveness in the European knowledge economies has received a total of 7.5 million euros from the state of Baden-Württemberg since 2010. It's the case that our funding runs out next year, but we're optimistic that working together with the state of Baden-Württemberg, it can be extended. This will allow us to maintain the excellent networks we have created and the reputation we have gained. At the fourth SEEK conference, ZEW ran poster sessions to present findings of current research. Currently, 17 economic SEEK projects are in progress worldwide, bundled together in Mannheim.